Good morning and welcome to our service of Holy Communion here from St Mary's and I'm joined by David Taylor. We have prepared the space for our online work. We've lit the candles, remembering Jesus as the light of the world. Hopefully you have your liturgy sheets and you'll be able to join in the responses with us. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord is here. His, His Spirit, Spirit is, is with us. us. Well, what a week it has been. On Monday, it was World Peace Day. I do hope you watched a video that was online. And uh, there were some photos shown at the start of this video to remind you of it. We also had our Macmillan coffee morning on uh, Friday, yesterday. Um, as I'm recording this on Saturday. It really showed the best of the British community spirit and a culture of kindness because so far we've raised just over a thousand pounds. That is incredible, just showing that God was with us even through the rain first thing in the morning and the cold and everything else. There was definitely God's spirit there with us. I'm just going to give you a reminder of Macmillan, the charity that we were raising money for and what it does with an encouragement for you to donate more money as well. Macmillan wants to help everyone with cancer. Live life as fully as they can. Whatever you're going through. Whoever you are. We help with money worries. And rights at work. Offer expert information. Sport in hospital. And at home. Day and night. Good boy. Offering physical, financial and emotional support. They know I'm a person, not just a patient. <laughs> That's so sneaky. I'm Dylan's mum. I'm a dad. A colleague. A neighbour. A friend. <laughs> right now in the UK. There are over 2.5 million people living with cancer. And that number grows every year. Cachon helpi e board ana e vo yo bobble simbeu gata kanka. Fight fundraising! Volunteering! And campaigning! <laughs> so, whatever cancer throws you away, they're right there with you. And next week, we have the St Francis Gift Day. St Francis every year have a gift day on the Sunday closest to St Francis Day, which is the 4th of October. And so the 4th of October lands on a Sunday this year. And so we will remem be remembering St Francis and what he stood for and giving thanks for our St Francis Church here in West Wickham. As well as that, um, in the morning, there will also be a pet service in the afternoon online. You should have rece received some details of the Zoom invitation. Um, if you haven't, then please do contact me and I can give you the details. And then the following week, it is our harvest weekend with messy harvest on Friday, a harvest supper on Saturday and services on Sunday. So much going on, but I really do sense God here with us helping us to be creative in the different ways that we approach our social activities and our services. And so when we do come out of our comfort zone and do those different things, he can work miracles. So let's praise God that we can be creative in our first hymn, Jesus is Lord.
God, to whom all hearts, hearts are open, all, all desires known, and, and from whom no secrets, secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now we'll say together the collect for the 16th Sunday after Trinity, which is printed at the top left of the readings sheet. Lord of creation, whose glory is around and within us, open our eyes to your wonders, that we may serve you with reverence and know your peace at our life's end, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now Gifty will bring us our first scripture reading. The reading is from Philemon chapter 2, verses 1 to 13. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility, regard others as better than yourselves. Let, if, let each of you look not to your own interest, but to the interest of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Amen. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When he entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things? Who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another, If we say from heaven, he will say to us, Why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, We do not know. And he said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, Go to work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of the father? They said the first. Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. 
with the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. A prayer before I speak. Dear Father, open our hearts and minds to understand what you're saying to each one of us today. There's a short story that I heard in which a respectable church-going woman feels superior to those who she feels are of a lower social class. As they all process up to heaven, she's shocked by seeing those lower class people going up to heaven as well, all excited and cheering. At the end of the procession are the respectable people like herself and her husband, who had always had a little of everything and the God-given wit to use it. These people moved forward with great dignity, accountable as they always had been for good order and common sense and respectable behaviour. They, they alone were on message, yet she could see by their shocked and altered faces even their virtues were being burned away. The author says... Our lives are testimony to the love of God for sinners. We are parables of obedience, living out daily the implications of discipleship by offering compassion and care to others. In our Gospel reading, we have the respectable priests and the elders challenging Jesus, the spiritual leaders who say they are God-fearing, and waiting for the Messiah, are certain that they are serving God as they have always observed all that their religion said they should do and say and believe. And when they're faced with the promised Messiah, they did not change their minds and thought that they were still waiting for the Messiah to come. But others of less education and status didn't think of themselves as good enough to be called by Jesus. But when they saw and they heard him, they believed. The issue is really how we respond to God's call to repentance and his invitation to live as a recipient of grace. There has to be consistency between words and deeds, religious confession and active discipleship. Verbal expressions of obedience to the demands of God's message of love become hollow and meaningless if they do not come out of a total commitment in response to God's love for us in Jesus Christ. God seeks our hearts and lives, not just our words. It also highlights the inclusive love of God for us. By his actions and his words, Jesus stressed both forgiveness and acceptance. Acceptance to the prostitutes and the tax collectors. He didn't accept their sinful ways of living and yet was willing to meet them, talk to them with respect and even to eat with them. Both sons in Jesus' story show that we totally depend on God's grace in Jesus Christ. The good people who speak the correct words yet do not follow through with their actions and those who make no claims of righteousness but receive the gospel in faith, we are all flawed, sinful human beings who are struggling to live to according to God's will for us. All of us depend on God's love in Jesus Christ. God's grace is at the centre of our Christian faith. Everything follows from God's initiative in loving and accepting us, even before we can do anything in response. Dietrich Bonhoeffer talked about cheap grace, a concept that willingness to experience the wonder of God's love and salvation demands nothing more of us. It's not a demand to offer God's virtuous activity in return, as if we can make ourselves worthy of the gift of grace by our own goodness. Jesus taught instead the concept of costly grace, 
a sense of the depth of love which God has poured out for us in Jesus and a willingness to let the love of God enter us, transforming our lives and actions. Costly grace would have us live our lives as people who know God's grace, as that which T.S. Eliot said, costs nothing less than everything. In today's epistle from verse 5, we find a beautifully crafted statement of the Christian faith, in who Jesus was and in what he accomplished. He was divine, and yet put aside his divine nature to inhabit the limitations of a human being. He emptied himself, putting aside his divine nature and became a servant to the human race. He allowed himself to fulfill the divine plan and went to the cross as a way of God showing the world that he understands the troubles and hardships that all humans go through. By that servanthood and through his suffering, Jesus was raised back to the Godhead and to become the sign that God is a God of love for all that he created and for each and every human being. So let's all confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Then focus on Jesus and follow his lead. Be of his mind and having the same love, doing nothing from a selfish point of view, but in true humility, considering others more important than yourself and serving others as he would want you to. For us at St Mary's and St Francis, as in the wider church, we will be more effective if we are all working together with the same objective. We're called to live and work together and loving each other and having due regard for each other and each other's opinions and treating them as superior to our own. To achieve this, we must be focused on Jesus himself and the good news of the kingdom that he brings into the world. We're motivated to want unity because we want to enjoy the comfort of knowing we're all following Christ and belonging to his wider family. A family which demonstrates love towards each other, our thinking to be aligned with each other, all focusing on Jesus and the words of the gospel. Paul said to the Philippians, you must work out your own salvation, which means I've told you all you need to know about Jesus and the kingdom of God. Now it's up to you what you do with that information. So we must take responsibility for ourselves as we have all the information in scripture that we need. Even though all the writers are now not around to keep telling us what we should be doing. As it says in the last verse of the epistle, it is God at work in us, enabling us to do the things that he wants us to do. Faith followed by works. And in the following verses, Paul says that in this crooked generation, you should shine as stars, as a light in the world. So will we shine as stars and be lights for Christ in the world? Amen. And so we come to a time when we can affirm our faith in that God who works in us so that we, we can do those things that he wants us to do in that new creative way. And let's say the affirmation of faith together. We believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. We believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day he rose again. 
he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. And now David will lead us in some prayers of intercession. Lord, on this day, you have given us grace to offer our prayers to you. And you promised that when two or three are gathered in your name, you will listen and grant our requests. Fulfill now, Lord, the desires and needs of us, your people, granting us the blessings of your knowledge and truth. We pray for your churches throughout the world, from here at St Mary's, St Francis and St John's, to all churches in your name. Guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that all who profess themselves Christians may hold the faith in unity of spirit, of righteousness, of life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guard and strengthen your servant Elizabeth that she may put her trust in you and, along with world leaders, seek your ways, as their decisions have a huge impact on our lives. Heavenly Father, your love for humanity was revealed in your Son Jesus, whose earthly life began in the poverty of a stable and ended in the pain and isolation of the cross. We hold before you all charities now suffering financial difficulties in this crisis, especially the Macmillan charity, and ask for your blessings on the nurses for the love and comfort they give. We thank you for showing us you were with us on Friday morning at our gathering outside with sunshine and a blue sky. Grant us, Lord, the strength to accept the things we cannot change and the courage to change the things we can and the wisdom to know the difference. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Father, give strength to those who are involved in the battle with the COVID virus. Find them a vaccine to bring an end to this pandemic. Those who work within the confines of sealed walls, putting the needs of patients suffering from this disease before the safety of themselves. We pray for businesses, those national and those local facing more restrictions as in the hospitality industry. We are looking at a loss of income that may lead to more job losses and for those who suffer due to losing their jobs. Also for the volunteers who run local food banks who will be needed now by more people. Father, who has blessed us with the care and joy of children, Give us light and strength to guide them that they may love those things that are true and pure, following the example of Jesus Christ. We give thanks to you, Lord, for our families and all we meet in our daily lives. Dear Lord, protect all refugees and people from war-torn areas, for orphans wandering to an uncertain future, for all those whose image of the world you created is marred by pain and suffering. For those who feel the best way to a new life is to charge their lives on crowded boats across the channel, and especially for children robbed of their childhood. We pray for you to be with them. May they know the power of your presence to ease their trouble and prayers to stop all violence. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Lord, you walked on the earth and saw the pain and suffering. You rose from death to resurrected life to teach us how to give comfort, treating the needy first. 
We pray to you for all who are sick in mind, body and soul, that they will be held in your loving arms. Bless the work of doctors and surgeons and hospital staff who work in the emergency services, again looking after others. And Holy Father, today we commend to your care Matthew Ratner, the police sergeant shot dead in the early hours of Friday morning in a Croydon custody suite. We include for your blessing his family and colleagues and all police officers who put themselves in danger every day to protect lives and make the streets of our towns and cities safe. And for all magistrates and judges who administer justice in our country. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bring the power of your resurrected life to all those who are unwell. May your grace carry them through their hard times into new times filled with hope and joy. We give back to you, Holy Father, those you gave to us. You did not lose them when you gave them to us, and we do not lose them by their return to you. Your Son has taught us that life is eternal and love cannot die. We commend to you those who have died in the name of Christ and known to us only. Welcome, Lord, into your calm and peaceful kingdom those who have departed this earthly life. Grant them rest and a place with you. Dear Lord, send us your light and truth May you protect and comfort us here and all those who have throughout your world joined us in prayer this day. Rejoicing in the fellowship of Blessed Mary and all your saints, we commend ourselves and all people to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We now come to a time to reflect on our past week and maybe remember some times when we've acted from a selfish point of view, didn't think of someone else, listen to their opinion. And so we come to our confession, which we'll say together from the liturgy sheet. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now while I prepare the altar for communion, time for you to reflect on our dependence on God's love and his grace while we sing or listen to the hymn, Be Still and Know.
And so we come to our Eucharistic prayer. The Lord is here. His, His Spirit, Spirit is, is with us. us. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift them, them to, to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to, to give, give thanks, thanks and praise. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For he is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born of a woman and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us a people for your own possession. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, ever praising you and saying, Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God, God of, of power, power and might, heaven, heaven and earth, earth are full of your glory. glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the, in the highest. highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself, made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has, has died. died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. Accept through him our great High Priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your Divine Majesty, renew us by your Spirit, Inspire us with your love and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be, be your, your name. Your kingdom, kingdom come, your, your will, will be done, done on earth, earth as in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us today our daily bread. bread. Forgive us, us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us, us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the, kingdom, the power, power, and the glory are yours, now, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though, Though we, we are many, we are, we are one body. body. Because, because we, we all share in, in one bread. And so we have remembered Jesus Christ who unites us in his body and blood. I will be receiving the bread and wine on your behalf. And so it is as if you are receiving the bread and the wine. So please do use this time to reflect on Christ's sacrifice and what it means to you. And you can use the words of the act of spiritual reception on the service sheet, which David will read out as well. O oh, loving God, in union with Christian people throughout the world, 
and across the centuries, hearing your holy word and receiving the precious body and blood of your dear Son, I offer you praise and thanksgiving, even though I am exiled from tasting the bread of heaven and drinking the cup of life. I pray that you will reunite me with all the baptized and with your Son who gave his life for us. Come, Lord Jesus, dwell in me and send your Holy Spirit that I may be filled with your presence. So let's pray. Almighty God, you have taught us through your Son that love is the fulfilling of the law. Grant that we may love you with our whole heart and our neighbours as ourselves, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we say together the post communion prayer from the liturgy sheet. Almighty, Almighty God, God, we, we thank, thank you for feeding us. us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. So before our blessing, I'm going to tell you what the last hymn is and also remind you, I forgot earlier to tell you that uh, the Church is Together in West Wickham service is at St Francis tonight at 6.30. Do come along or you will have received a Zoom invitation with the details to log in. So you can join us by either means. Um, it would be great to come together as churches together, something that we haven't done for many, many months. Um, the ministers have met, but uh, it would be great to come together and see some of the other Christians in West Wickham. So, after the blessing, we're going to sing our last hymn. God is working his purpose out, recognising our dependence on his grace, as Jesus did, in order to achieve great things. Just look at this week. And now the blessing. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.